So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome in one more session of the Athena Soft and Research Skill uh, Academy that is organized uh, together with my colleagues all over the Athena, me, Anna Barata, Herve, I can see here Nicolaos, George, uh, other people from HMU, from IPP, from Orleans, from Zigen, uh, very, recent, very soon from Vigo, from Maria Curie, Skodlowskova in Poland, from Cusano in Italy, uh, from Vilnius Tech. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, you, all of you together with us in one more session. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have today uh, Dr. Anna Sa, a psychologist from Porto, from business school that is going to speak to us about principles of emotional intelligence. But I will give the floor to my colleague and co-organizer co of this uh, initiative, Anna Barata, uh, to present this, uh, the today's speaker. So Anna, the floor is yours. Anna B, the floor is yours. Anna B. <laughs> Start. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being uh, around, even with the, the micro, the cameras off. Thank you very, very much, Anna Sa, for having accepted this invitation. It's really uh, very, very. Uh, it's an honor to to have you here, speaking in in first uh, person about uh, this. Uh, such fundamental uh, issue, which uh, is emotional intelligence. And so as uh, Co Costas has referred, Anna is a psychologist and she has a very large experience in uh, working with people in several contexts, academic, business, coaching. And uh, I believe that uh, she is the best to introduce herself as well. <laughs> And I'm really very, very um, personally happy to to have um, been possible to to have Anna here. Okay, so uh, Anna, the screen and the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I hope you enjoy uh, the um, also well having this uh, this session because it's. Uh, part of it and uh, you are a passionate about people so i hope that you actually enthusiastic and make uh, everyone motivated to keep on with uh, uh, with the working and life right okay thank okay. you Let, let's see, yeah. let's see if i can meet the expectations okay because now the bar of is course. Very, very oh. high. <laughs> So guys, guys and girls, hello, hello, good afternoon. Um, first of all, I would like to ask you if you can and turn your cameras on because it's so different to talk to a black square with a name or to people. And I, I always say I love people. I'm passionate about people. I, I love people so much that I was born with a twin brother. So if you can, please turn your cameras on in order for us to see you and to connect differently. If you can't, well, that's it. Um, but if you can, please do that. So, as Anna and Costa were saying, I I work with uh, with people and with uh, with uh, personal development from twenty years from now, more or less. Um, and uh, as I told you. I, I was born with the twin brother, so I, I start training since day one, since moment one uh, with people. And obviously, emotion, emotional intelligence, it's very, very important. So today I'm going to present you, let me just share my screen. Do we have cameras on already or not? If not, I'll lose the bets for me. No, no one turned the cameras on. Almost some people, you know, they are starting to switch on the camera. Oh, nice. Tiago, welcome. Welcome, <laughs> Tiago. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me oh, Tris is in a public Wi Fi, so he can. Hello, Tiago. Thank you so much for turning your camera on. It's, it's very different to see you or not. So thank you so much for receiving me. As Anna and Costa were saying, I, I studied psychology. Then in the um, PowerPoint presentation, you will have my contacts, my website, my personal project, uh, and my email if you want to, to, to stay in, in touch. Uh, as I was saying, I'm passionate, passionate about a lot of things. 
And it's very, very important for us to know our passions and relate them with personal intelligence. And we are going to see why in just a minute. So I love people, it's my, my biggest passion. I love to travel and I love uh, Porto. Porto is my city, is the one that you can see there. And uh, I invite you to come here because Anna can also testify that it's an incredible city. Oh, we have more faces, nice. Thank you, thank you. More faces. And I'm passionate about, passionate about studying and also about food, food to cook or to eat. So these are my passions. And I, I always um, ask myself what connects all these passions. And, and then I understood um, they are connected by the learning factor. I love to, to learn because I, lo I love to then uh, um, give that back to the people I'm in touch with. So this is why I maintain my sanity. And this is very important for my emotional intelligence. And with this introduction, I'm going to ask what, to, please write down, what do you think is emotional intelligence? What is emotional intelligence for you? You can turn your mics on and answer or just write it down. Capacity to read people, control your feelings. You may, you may give us uh, two definitions for that. The definition of emotion. Yes. The definition of intelligence. Yes. Because uh, here around we speak a lot of languages. Mm -hmm. So in each language, emotion and intelligence may have uh, a different translation yes if you do it in greek i could give you my opinion but this is only greek and greek is a language that very few people understand yeah. i'm sorry but i i don't i don't uh, speak greek i'm so sorry for that so you may give us those two definitions in order to understand what is the emotional intelligence I'm going to give it to give you them both, but I, I prefer not doing it now. But okay. you you think for you, what is your concept? Either for emotion and intelligence. And if it's a plus, if they just sum each other of, or if it's one plus one equals three and three is emotional intelligence. What's your opinion? Well, you're asking me? Yeah. Uh, emotional intelligence is a, a psychological uh, uh, term, no? Yes, it is. It, is, it has something to do with uh, our uh, soul, no? More or less, more with our emotions than with our soul, but yes. So, uh, following uh, my... Uh, From your perspective. Yes, uh, um, the Greek uh, point of view coming from uh, the ancient times, but still alive, mm -hmm. is that uh, emotions uh, are all those forces that move us. Okay. The Latin root is the same, okay? Emotion means something that moves yeah. us. Motion, yeah. Okay, so the emotions uh, uh, are characterizing the intelligence, but the intelligence uh, are what uh, join us, what is joining us. It is something that uh, is common to everybody. Somebody is an intellectual uh, substance if uh, it is uh, well recognized by the others, no? Let's see. Uh, so, let's the emotions, see. the emotions that make us uh, touchable and uh, able to to come in contact with other people may be called emotional intelligent substances. Okay, I'm going to present you other perspectives, but uh, let's let's see here in, in the chat some more. Yeah, uh, Anna, 
Yeah. First of all, uh, Dimitris Sag is a professor in our university to introduce you. And uh, yeah. Angeliki, I don't know who is Angeliki, has raised her hand oh. in order to answer. Um, hello. hello. I'm a student of HMU. Uh, I don't uh, see how I'm listening. I am. <laughs> I'm really anxious right now. Okay. Really? Um, really just really? Well, yes. <laughs> Okay, I think that um, emotional um, uh, intelligence is a capacity of a person to read one's person personality or feelings by just watching them or listening to them. It has something to do with like um, empathy. Yes. Um, also, I think is a very vital capacity and it's something that misses from our world lately. Um, I think it's really important for some people, for everyone. <laughs> yes, thank you. I don't know why were you nervous. You you spoke uh, very, very well. Thank you for sharing your perspective. <laughs> thank um, you. Anyone else? We have a lot of different definitions here, the capacity to read people, express, emo express emotions showing empathy, balance emotions and responsibilities, control ourselves, uh, intelligence influenced by emotions. Okay, we have a lot of answers here. So let's see, you, you are just turning my, my job easier here in this afternoon. I'm going to highlight three points. We only have one hour more or less. Uh, so we, we won't have a lot of time, but I'm going to talk about emotional intelligence, the concept, um, and I'm going to, to talk, I'm going to share the um, Daniel Goldsman perspective. There are the other authors that uh, defend, uh, that have different perspectives, but uh, Daniel Goldman is my, uh, it's my, my, the best, for me, it is the best one. It's the, the, the one that we can apply easily to, to our contexts, either they are professional or personal. So it's the one that I usually teach. And then I'm going to, to talk about some skills and some tools that you can use in order to develop your own skills of emotional intelligence. So we don't have a lot of time, but, um, but uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of a lot to do in this hour. Does anyone knows how uh, intelligence, how this intelligent, emotional intelligence started to be studied? Why? No? So Daniel Goleman, and that's why I, I always like to, to give him credit, Daniel Goleman started some studies at prisons and discovered that um, most of the people that, that were there, they were very, they were super intelligent. They were, they had IQs over 120. Usually the normal IQ is between 85, 8 and 102 and 20. And Danielle Goldman uh, discovered that the, most of the people they have over 120 and uh, a lot of them, uh, very near to 150, that is the top of the top of the score of emotional of intelligence. So you wonder why people that were so intelligent ended in prisons. And he started wondering why didn't people succeed and why didn't people could adapt to their own reality and society and rules. So he started studying that and he was the one we, that, that present the world with the concept of emotional intelligence. So the first thing to highlight is that if it's not IQ, and it has something to do with uh, the capacity, the ability to adapt ourselves, to manage the rules, to live in society. They had to, to have a different name. So we call it emotional intelligence. That is the intelligence that is um, connected with our emotions. It's not the last type, okay? So I'll write the asterisk. Um, it's not the last 
type of intelligence. As you can see, uh, there are an author that is called, this is here underlined, that is called Arash Mahmoud. Um, he started to study the, our different kinds of intelligence and he discovered or defends that we, we have three different types of intelligence. IQ is the intelligence um, that is related with our uh, rational approach and it's uh, related uh, with uh, it's very predictable, it's very reactive, it's um, usually inflexible because it has to do with our systems of beliefs. Um, it is very uh, materialized in the things we do uh, about uh, our, our beliefs and our behaviors and uh, the ways we put our beliefs in practice. Then Daniel Goldman started with the emotional quotient. Now he's studying how emotion, how emotions can help us to be more intelligent and to be to have a, an adaptive approach to the context we are in, and we can be obviously in society more adaptive. Uh, obviously, it has to do with empathy and it has to do with uh, proactiveness and flexibility, and obviously, it's it's it depends on person to person. But now we are start start to talking about spiritual spiritual intelligence or quotient that it has to do uh, it started with uh, uh, physics quantic quantic uh, quantic physics and um, it has to do with the different the the some I, I don't know who but someone said that emotional intelligence had to do with our soul no no the spiritual intelligence is the one that he has to 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 do to with our soul that is the one that is related with our soul and um, the principles of mechanic quantics but today we are going to focus on emotional intelligence and emotional quotient okay but i would like you to know that we already have a different type that is higher than the emotional intelligence. We can consider that um, all the intelligence are very important and very useful, but the lowest level is the, um, intelli the, the, the rational intelligence. Then we have the emotional intelligence and then we have the spiritual intelligence, okay? So just in order for you to see. Uh, and so do you think that emotional intelligence is innate? Was it born to us or we can develop it? You can share your, your answer. I think that we can develop it. Developing? Yeah. I agree. I think, I think, I think it's something we develop. We develop. We develop. That's why you are here. To yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that answer. I always say that uh, uh, every time that people say to me, no, 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 it, it's born with us. And I said, so wh why am I here? Yes, we can develop it. That's why I'm here. Obviously, we can have um, some um, characteristics, some uh, uh, personal traits that can help develop our emotional intelligence. And we are going to talk about them today but obviously it's not born with us we can develop it and danielle goldman gave her the structure uh, to develop it uh, so usually our our reactions mirror our emotions usually we don't have the time to think what am i going to do next i usually feel an emotion and i react instantly instinctively but this is intelligence common intelligence emotional in, emotion intelligence is gaining a space between the emotion and the reaction and this is why working with emotional intelligence is so difficult because what we are asking uh, someone when he, he is behaving with emotional intelligence is do not react to your first impulse and this is very very difficult to do why is that do you know it's just time i'm always asking i'm always but i think, I think 
Anna, I think yeah. that this case also has to do with the culture because some cultures, they don't uh, react as they think, or, you know, they, they are more, how can I say, uh, they control their feelings and, you know, they don't express their feelings during their reactions. But I mean, if you go to Mediterranean, we are more reactive and we are more reflective <laughs> on what do we believe with our actions. I, I prefer to say we are more passionate because yeah, it's, whatever you it. say. <laughs> because it, it seems bigger, it, it seems good. Um, the culture is one aspect and what are the others? Can you, can you? Another thing that I can say, uh, following the professional uh, uh, sports is like the training. Like you to keep to keep your mental warm and your heart very cold in order yeah. to control it. So it's a, it has to do with the training as well. Okay. Charles is sorry. Charles is uh, saying that because uh, people react by instinct, and I believe I I can't say your name. Aye, Kitty. Yeah. Yeah, she puts the hand on the air. It was the same. Yeah. Book, you know. Yeah. Okay. And now she's she's uh, she. You put your hand uh, to speak, didn't you? Yes. Okay. So you can. I'm not sure if you're talking about me. <laughs> yes, it was. Can yes. you tell? Just sorry because I don't know how to pronounce your name. Can yes. you tell your name? Uh, you can call me Angel. Uh, it's just my name. Angel. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um. Okay, I think that the question was that um, how uh, we um, develop uh, this emotional intelligence and yeah. how some people cannot and maybe um, is about the way that um, someone is raised um, by their families, I think, um, or it has to do with the culture or uh, friends. Uh, the context in general, you, you think, right? That, oh, it has to do also with the fact that someone is introverted or extroverted. Yes. 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 Okay, good answers, but I, I'm, 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 I'm not sure if this is a good, uh, uh, a good news or a bad news to you, but uh, most of people don't, cannot work with emotional intelligence because our brains are broken, or at least they are damaged, okay? So I don't know if this is good news for you or not, but it has everything to do with our brains. Do you know what our brains are designed to do? Designed since the, the day one? What is our brain for? I'd say problem solving. Problem solving, more. Surviving. Surviving, that is, that, that's the correct answer. So this is why it's so difficult for us to react with emotional intelligence because we are not designed to be emotional be beings. We are designed to survive, okay? So we have an incredible hardware, our bodies, our clothes, etc. We, we are uh, super chic now, but our brains didn't have the... the the, the upgrade they should have. So we are just common beings with a very ancient brain. So emotional intelligence is the part of us that is flexible and capable to change. Usually they say, oh, people can't change. Of course they can. They can if they, they change the way they behave. So usually, uh, Every one of us has a, a, a kind or a, a, a size or whatever uh, dimension you, you want to give it of normal rational intelligence is the IQ. And then we have our own personalities and then we have the emotional intelligence. So the IQ is the part that is, it doesn't change. It's stable over our lifetime, can improve with memory and with some capacities, but just improves a little bit. But our emotional intelligence, it's, we are very capable to develop it. And most of the times, emotional intelligence is much more important than rational intelligence because 
we are now in a world that is super connected and people and our relations are very important. So uh, don't don't think, oh, my, my IQ is not that high. Oh, don't mind. Because if you have a lower IQ, but a higher um, EQ, emotional intelligence, you will, you will be very uh, much easily adapted to, to this world. And then we have our personality that is more or less stable during time. Obviously, we change personality because we change beliefs, okay? Obviously, I have 43 now and I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago when I started uh, or when I finished my degree in psychology. I almost didn't knew anything about people, so I develop myself as a person. So I develop my personality, but I have some, some traits that are more or less the same. So emotional intelligence is the thing that can do the difference here in our development. Obviously, as I was saying, our brain is the, is the and the way that our brain is uh, rearranged or not is the thing that affects uh, emotional intelligence the most. Why? We have three different structures, as you can see there in the picture. We have the reptilian complex, and that's our mm, uh, first brain. That is, that is our first brain, is the reptilian complex. Is, it has to do with the uh, instincts and with our uh, fight or flight responses. We are designed to survive. We are not designed to feel or we are not designed to think. We are designed to survive because if we don't survive, we can neither think or feel, okay? So every time we have some, um, some external uh, stimulus that comes to us, we tend to react immediately and we react with reptilian complex. But we, with, with the time and with passing time, we have two different structures more. We have the limbic system that is responsible with our emotions. It's, it's the yellow part that you see there. And you have the neocortex and it's, it is the rational uh, uh, brain. It, it is one that is responsible uh, for us to think and to solve problems. So solving problems is something that is in a uh, human evolution. It's very, very, uh, we, Sorry, uh, it's it's very very new uh, in the human evolution, the solving problem capacity. So we are designed to survive. That's why we are emotional hijacked so many times. We have the the stimulus, and then the brain will decide if it's good for us to survive or not. Then if it, it develops an emotion through that that thing that happens to us and then we have the response what we want with emotional intelligence is to gain time between the thing that happens to us and our response if not we are usually emotional hijacked but what is this about being emotional hijacked if i ask you how do you feel right now in this moment just right now what do you feel what would, would the emotion be you can write down in chat please how do you feel? Curious? Neutral, relaxed, anxious, curious, empty. Okay, you are better than the most of the humans because usually when you ask an adult how do you feel right now usually we have two answers and believe me i'm also a coach and a therapist so when every time i talk about emotions usually when i when i ask people how do we feel with adults we have two answers do you know what they are can you guess stressed out no. Angel, you can answer. Maybe depressed. No, no. Some of them, yes, but no. <laughs> they no. say that they are fine. They are fine. And the other one? I don't know. Yeah, usually it's like this. When I ask them, they say good or they say 
bad. And I have to, to, to ask, but good, what, what kind of good? Good, why? In what manners? Or bad, why? why what manners? Because usually people cannot, cannot recognize emotions. And even the, the people that answer here in the chat, they are neutral. Happy and said, yeah, someone, someone, but I can say the name, but someone guessed here in the chat. Usually people say they are good or they are bad. And if I, I, I ask, but good, uh, what kind of good? Is it uh, curious? Is it surprise? Is it passionate? People are like, oh, I didn't even knew we had so much emotions. So how do we want to have emotional intelligence if you cannot recognize your own emotions, okay? So the first lesson is to recognize our emotions. And if you, you think, you don't know your emotions well enough, well, I invite you to see uh, um, a film from Pixar called Inside Out, and Inside Out talk us about the five basic emotions. Every time we are feeling one of those five. Do you know what emotions are, the five basic emotions? So happiness, sadness, happiness. anger, disgust, and the last one is, I forgot. <laughs> it's the one that sets himself on fire. It's, it's anger. So those are the five. It's a great movie. It's a great movie for children, but it's an incredible movie to adults. So we have at least, we have five different basic emotions. Why are they called basic? Because they are, they are universally expressed and universal recognized. What is saying that if I am here in Portugal and you are there in Greece or Italy or China or Australia, wherever you are, we are going to show, for instance, joy in the same way. In the same, we contract our faces, our, our primary muscles in the same way. We have, we have the same kind of expression through these five emotions. So they are universally expressed and universal recognized. And this is very important because of the paradigm of the fight, flight, or freeze. Because we are designed to survive, we only interact with the ones we consider that they are equal to us. If we, we perceive someone as, um, I don't know, stronger than we are, we tend to flight. It's like, bye-bye. If it's, uh, if we, if it's uh, not as strong as we are, we tend to fight because we are the strongest one. If we don't know, we freeze. We don't interact. So, we need to understand emotions in order to understand what are we feeling, in order to understand if we are going to say to our brains, please interact. Otherwise, reptilian brain will fight, flight, or freeze. Am I making myself clear? So it is for the ones, okay, for, thank you. For the ones who say, oh no, I love to feel things. No, that's not true. We only love to feel good things. It's like surprises. Every time I ask, who likes surprises? People are, me, me. No, no, no. We like good surprises. Imagine you go to your car and it's all broken. No, that's the kind of surprise you won't like to have. Okay. So it's very, it's very, uh, we need to pay attention to ourselves and to our emotions in order to develop our emotional intelligence. And we have a lot of emotions, a lot of different emotions. Um, I talked to you about the five basic ones um, that are um, joy, fear, anger, disgust, and uh, was it fear? Did I say the part? Sadness. 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 The one that was missing. Sadness. <laughs> I always forget sadness. Mm -hmm. I'm too joyful to, to recall the sadness. So. But it's important to feel it's sad as well. Very important. It? And uh, it's very important to feel them all. So that's a good exercise because usually people don't like to feel some emotions. Why is sadness important? Every, this, this all five emotions, they have a function. They have an a, a adaptive function to human beings, all the five. So 
what do you think is the importance of uh, feeling sadness? Angel and Costas raised their hand. And you can talk, speak up. They'll just turn on your mics and speak up. It's better. Because it makes us appreciate the happiness, I think. Mm -mm -mm -mm. From a, it, it's true, but from a, um, a, a, a level below that, imagine, the, imagine that physically or you are talking about the, the neocortex brain or the uh, emotional brain. Put yourself in the reptilian brain. From that perspective, why do we need sadness? Well, let's start with the easiest one. Why do, we, why do we need fear? We need fear in order to protect ourselves. How can we protect? In order to, in order to survive, do not do things that is going to risk our safety. Yeah. Uh, to know what things we can do. Uh, this is my yeah. reply about fear. It's a, it's, an, it's a reaction of knowledge and awareness of your capability and awareness of the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that, you know, as I told you, protect us. The fear protect us. Protect us. And it's uh, when uh, in, the in the paradigm of fight, flight or freeze is the emotion that uh, drives us to flight. It's like, goodbye, I'm not going to stay here in this situation. Okay. And why is joy for? Joy for is like to appreciate things, to evaluate things, to assess things around us. Uh, to, to keep have... the species going. Yes, yes. <laughs> to make the background. The species. From, oh, Valeria, now it's, it's uh, here, it's uh, with the threatening. Yes, from a biological perspective, <laughs> joy is the, the force that keeps us going. Do you know? when you want to go to sleep and sometimes you have like a stretch you are almost sleeping and you have a stretch that is in, that is a muscle energy and joy uh, uh, helps us to create muscle energy in order to continue in order to go in order as Anna was saying um, for us to continue as a species in order to have fun so joy is the it's like the gas we put on in order to go through life okay and uh, sadness is for what when whenever you are sad what do you do usually for me sad oh. i'm sorry costas no, no no go ahead i mean i don't know how to answer you know to raise my hand or just you know react calm for... down for me, it's like an energy conservation of energy. Whenever I'm feeling sadness, it means that I relieve, you know, I relieve, I reject something negative from my side, you know, yeah. from within me. Usually our behaviors, the common behavior is just to slow down, is just to cry, is to understand what I don't want, what I want. So the sadness is the emotion that gives you the space to stop and think and stuff. Because when you are very joyful, you just don't sit there and say, oh, let me just think in this for a while. You have to have the straight emotion. That's why melancholics, the melancholic states are usually very creative states. We shouldn't never ever uh, uh, run away from uh, melancholy or from uh, sadness because they are very useful in order to give us time and space to think to feel okay it's the, the the emotion that makes us stop and then we have um anger what is what is anger for Salome is asking what should i let go in order to be happy uh, it's what sadness makes make me think uh I don't think I understand your question, Sensolme. Can you do it in another way? Oh, oh okay, because uh, it has a question mark after happy. I thought it was a question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we are always uh, talking about... Yeah, oh, okay, that's your, your thought. Okay, okay, okay. That's the, the relief you have when you are sad. Okay, so why, uh, why do we need this gas? 
in order to learn. In order to what? To learn, to, to get learn. new knowledge, to evaluate our knowledge, to reconfirm our knowledge, to communicate. Do, do your face, do, do the face you do when you are disgusted? My face when I'm disgusted? Yeah. I don't know my face, I know my reactions. <laughs> no, <laughs> what is your face? What is your face? Yeah. Yeah. You see what you did, you see bleh, and you turn your face off. So disgust is the emotion that protects us physically, not mentally as sadness or as uh, fear or, or as anger, but disgust is the emotion that protects you physically because when you turn your face to the other side or when you, you, you do the uh, you are closing your nose and your mouth. So, so it protects us for smells, odor, toxic substances, and blah, blah, blah. So disgust is a, a very important emotion, emotion also. And anger, what is anger for? Oh, listen you, it's, she said to protect from poison, yeah. It's a difficult question, why anger? Oh, yes, because- and I bet it's about fighting. It relates to the fighting uh, when it comes to reptile, the reptile um, instinct. Keeps enemies away. Yeah, uh, that is it. Because we have we have to protect ourselves. We have to set boundaries. We have to, to to have boundaries and limits, and we have to protect ourselves. So imagine if we didn't have anger. If someone attacks us, either was our friend or our child or in our work or a colleague or whatever, someone attacks us, we couldn't defend ourselves. So obviously, anger is a very important emotion. Also. All of the five of the five basic ones are very important. Okay. So sometimes people say, Oh, I would like to never be sad again. That's not that, that's not going to happen. And it's very important for us to be sad. It's the same thing as you said, Oh, I will never like to be happy again. No, you need joy in your life, you need fear, you need them all. But you can only react with emotional intelligence intelligence if anytime you can say what are you feeling one of those five you are always feeling for for instance for the ones who said um who said um, in a while they, they were feeling neutral they cannot be neutral neutral it's not an emotion it's a state so now in that state you are what are you feeling one of these five is it fear? Is it joy? Is it anger? Is this disgust or is this sadness? For me, joy. I gained my day. I just gained my day. And uh, did you notice something from five basic emotions? We only have uh, one positive emotion that is joy. All the other ones are not so positive. Why is that? In order to survive, we need to have more mechanisms to protect ourselves. Thank you. It's the correct answer. Tling, tling, tling. Because we are not designed to be happy. We are designed to survive. So we don't need as, much, as many things to be happy as we need to survive. That's why we have four, four uh, emotions related with, our, um, we, with us being alive and just one for us to to enjoy life, to enjoy life in order to gain energy to stay alive, okay? So this is why, yes? May I ask something? Yes, of course. I'm sorry for being late because I had a, a personal issue. Uh, I, I enjoy very much this conversation and the topic of it uh, indeed. I would like to ask if being sad or happy has to do about how we define, how, how every individual defines happiness and sadness. For example, if my paper is rejected from a journal, mm -hmm. I might cry five days mm -hmm. and, and, like a widow uh, wearing black. And uh, Dr. Petridis might be happy because this will be an opportunity for him to enrich his knowledge and uh, make it better uh, for uh, to, to, to review it again and to resend it again. So we have the same fact, but two different people, two different individuals react differently. 
for somebody might be sadness 100% or 1% or for somebody might be sadness and for somebody else might be a chance to improve himself. This is my, my question and yeah. my personal uh, 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 point of view in life. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, George, thank you for your participation. Um, obviously, you have uh, you are right. It depends on the way we, we define the emotions because we have, obviously, each one of us here, we have a different system of beliefs and our beliefs determinate our behavior. So the, the external, external cause is the same. It's the paper that you deliver. But if I have a, a system of, of beliefs that uh, saying to me that I cannot fail, that is, uh, I will be ashamed, that blah, 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 obviously I can be sad. But if my system of beliefs is uh, uh, more positive, uh, I can face that as an opportunity to learn, etc., etc. So usually our emotions, our system of beliefs will develop an emotion through that external cause that it'll gave, will give us the behavior we will uh, use in that specific situation. So obviously the same event can have two completely different behaviors because we have different beliefs. That's why we don't have an, an universal, uh, an universal definition, for instance, for sadness. We have signs in our face these, these five emotions that I talk about, they are not um, uh, recognized by a, um, a theoretical definition. They are recognized by our faces. And our faces, uh, our facial expression, it is very, very important in order to understand our emotions. Why is that? Does anyone know? Why is the face so important on nonverbal? Because we say more things with uh, our expressions done with our wording, no? But why is that? And it's 100% the truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> I like the um, question, George. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they, ref they, are, they are not disguisable. But why is that? That's the, yeah, the, the, all the it's, things you are saying? Are yeah, it's instinct. Uh, I, I have I, I don't find the right words to, to refer to it. Yeah, but I think you are you are in the, in the it's something spontaneous feeling. Yes, is the, the way your emotions react instinctively. Well, once, there is the without, poker face without thinking what uh, uh, what Costas will think of me. Let's say something else because he will uh, be nice to me or he will not be nice to me. But expressing face and body language. It's something you don't think it, it, it happens at once, spontaneously. Naturally. I would say because body language is like a global language. So it's a communication that it has the highest impact. That's why we are expressing like this. We feel that we can contact with everyone and express our message with anyone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's the, 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 the biological reason. There's a, a book I recommend to everyone, especially if you want, if you want to understand um emotions and but you want to also understand the things that are previous to emotions and the book is called sapiens and it's very interesting it's about our evolution as beings uh, through our biology and uh, our context and the gathering of the two of them so sapiens it's a very incredible book so why the our expression um our facial expression is so important it's because it's not we cannot control it. It depends on a part of our uh, nervous system. We have two different parts. It's the parasympathical part, and then we have the central part. The central part is the one we activate when we want, for instance, to do something, to walk, to raise an arm, etc. We can control that. I can think, let me just put my arm here or my leg, let me start walking with my left leg or whatever. I can do that. But I can control, oh, now I'm going to blush. Oh, now I'm going to, to just raise my eyebrow a little bit. We cannot control this because it depends on the same part of the um, uh, nervous system that control, for instance, our heartbeat or our, or, or our breathing. So 
facial expression is so important because we cannot control it. And if we can control it, we can manipulate it, okay? Is it clear? So these emotions, these five emotions, they are super important for us as a sign because we cannot control it. When we see them in people, they are true. They are there. They were generated by our uh, non-controllable um, uh, nervous system. That's why. Oh, thank you, Anna. That's it. That's why. That's why they're so important. And this all uh, talk about emotions starts because Costas uh, said something about controlling our emotions. So my question now is, is it positive when we control our emotions or not? We can't control our emotions, that's for sure. I'd say that, that's my take. Well, we can control it a little bit, not totally, but we can, that's why we have uh, to train it. That's why we yeah, have I, to gain awareness. I'd say that we can learn how to manage with our emotions, but we can't prevent from feeling them. Uh, what we can do is take the actions that we learn how to um, act on a certain occasion when we are feeling a certain emotion. That's yeah. what we can learn. Yes, Lucas. You are, Lucas is, is very right in his answer. He's saying, I cannot control my emotion, I can control my reaction. And that's the main purpose of emotional intelligence. Because I can control blush, I can control to, to start smiling. I can't, we can, neither I or you, whenever something makes us laugh, even though if it's, if it's our parents uh, that is uh, doing something stupid or, or our children, we, we always start to laugh. But then we can control, we can control the reaction not emotions. That's why it's so important to have a positive way to live our emotions. If we don't live our emotions, after a while, we will either explode or implode. It depends if we are extroverted or introverted. If we are extroverted, we tend to accumulate, 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 and then we explode usually for a, a little detail or in the, 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 the most uncommon and, uh, and uh, sometimes it's just little things that trigger us. So either we explode or we implode. So it's not positive to control our own emotions. Okay, so until now, we have emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is between our rational intelligence and our spiritual intelligence. We have five, at least we have five universal emotions. They are they all have an adapted adaptive function. They are very important for us, but we can develop emotional intelligence. So let's see what is emotional intelligence. But before that. Let me show, we, I have two wheels of emotions. Uh, well, one, this one is emotions and feelings, they are mixed. Do you know the difference between an emotion and a feeling? Oh. Who raised the hand? Angela, you can speak. I think an emotion is something more um, instant than a feeling. Mm -hmm. A feeling is something more um, generous, something that we feel uh, maybe a lot of time. I but that, that's that's true. There, so emotion it's something that it, in in terms of intensity, it's very intense, but in a very in a short period of time. A feeling it's not so intense but it's in a, a larger range of time. It's a, biggest, a, a bigger window. That's why people always say that uh, passional, passion transforms into love. Obviously, it's not true because there are two different things, but it's like that. It's it, it passion. It's very, very intense, but in a short period of time. And then love, it's not so intense and it's more... Uh, 
uh, balanced and then in a in a larger amount of time it's like uh, running the 100 yards or the marathon okay the feeling is the marathon the the emotion is like the 100 yards it, ta, 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 and it's over okay so here if you don't have nothing to do today before go to bed you can print this and then uh, start to recognize your own emotions but this is a very nice wheel to say uh, or, or to see or to gain awareness. Uh, I trained myself to do this uh, many years ago. I bring this and every in, in uh, the end of the day, I always do a gratitude exercise. So in the end of the day, I was like, what is my main feeling to describe this day? And then we go through the center to the, the, the circle. So, you have to choose one emotion. For instance, I choose happy. Okay, but what kind of happiness? Was I playful? Was I content? Was I interested? Was I accepted? Powerful, blah, blah, blah. And then you go and, until the, the last level. So this is a very good way. And it's the first tool to gain emotional intelligence the, because the first thing we need is to gain awareness of our feelings. So the first thing, if you want to develop your emotional intelligence, the first thing you can do is pick up either this wheel or this one. You have the, the Plutnik's wheel. It's, it's a little bit different. I prefer this one because I think it's more, um, it's simple to, to get and it's simple, it's, it's, uh, simple to use. So I prefer, prefer this one, but you also have another example. And if you can, Please make a pause each day or twice a day to feel, to see, to gain awareness of what are you feeling in that moment. For you to leave the state that as an adult, either you are good or you are bad. Okay. So at least at least five emotions. One of the five, the big five, you can you can um, gain awareness of, or you can pick up the wheel and see all of the emotions. So as you know, probably we have know. our yes. Yes, does anyone wants to talk? No. So probably as we know, we have the, the brain divided in two different areas, the left brain and the right brain. And uh, we always associate emotions to the right brain, okay? The left brain is more uh, uh, theoretical to patterns, to the rational stuff. It's more practical, analytical. Um, it has to do with planning, but the right brain it has um, much more to do with emotional intelligence, social intelligence, holistic thinking, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know if you recall this, you, you, we usually learn in school, um, what is the, the hand that commands, the, what is the, the, the right brain commands what part of the body? The left side. The left side, yes, thank you. And the left brain is commanded by the, the commands the, the right part. So if you want to develop your left, your if you want to develop your for, for me, for instance, I do almost everything with my with my right side. So in order to develop our right brain, we have to start using a lot more our left side. For instance, brush our teeth with, uh, with the other hand. For instance, change the cutlery in your hands when you are going to eat. For instance, start walking with your left leg instead of the, 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 the right one. For instance, if you tend to sleep in one side of the bed, try and go and sleep in the other. It's, it's not... It, it's, well, try and see it because all the experiences are different, but it's a, it's a very interesting experience. So we, if we want to develop this, 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 this side of emotional we have, this, this emotional side, we need to start doing a lot more stuff with the, the left side, okay? Uh, so what is emotional intelligence? Here you have, I will present you the, the Daniel Goldman definition. And he said that emotional intelligence is the ability to su successfully cope and resolve an emotional and stable situation. He's learning to control emotions so that they work in our favor and not let them dominate our actions and thoughts 
making us make inappropriate and unreasonable decisions. So here you have it all. So it's saying what? It's saying, don't be hijacked by your emotions that were triggered by an, uh, an external event. It could be any event and gain the time and the space necessary to develop the right reactions. As uh, I don't, as George was saying, he said, I can have the same external cause and two different behaviors. Yes, you can, because you have a different uh, um, system, uh, system belief. So because we are all different, what we have to do is to train ourselves in some specific skills that will give us the enough time in order to choose our reaction instead of use the reaction that our reptilian brain is going to give us. Okay, any question until now? Wait, 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 no? So let's uh, see. I have one. Yes. So um, on, on the last slide. This one? Yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, apathetically speaking, someone that is that is left-handed will end up being more emotional, intelligent, or socially adapt adapted to all the circumstances. It can develop. For example, it can develop. Is we don't do it otherwise, okay? But for mm -hmm. all, okay. we don't do it otherwise. If you are left-handed, you only have more potential to develop your right brain but it's not for instance i have a twin brother i'm uh, i'm right-handed he's left-handed mm -hmm. and he has a, a very good potential to develop all the stuff that is in the, in the right brain uh higher than mine but uh it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that it already is developed he has to do the way his way okay through okay. life but, uh, but he has the potential to do it in a higher way that's why i don't know if you if you noticed but um, usually um, actors usually they are left-handed have you ever noticed that when they write down something in films or a series no they, i haven't i've never thought about yeah, that but, but they are left-handed uh, um, the majority like 80 percent of them when they are signing something or writing down something they are left-handed they are they are a, a better potential to develop these skills these kinds of skills Okay, that's interesting. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. Um, so Danielle Goldman presents the world with a model, and it's the, it's called the 1.0 version because I will present you uh, also the 2.0 version uh, because they are different. So uh, Danielle Goldman presents us with a model um, uh, that defines his concept of emotional intelligence. So he said that emotional, we, we can develop emotional intelligence if we develop these five different skills, kinds of skills. And we have three skills that are personal competence and we have two skills that are relational competence. Which one do you think it's more important to develop emotional intelligence? The personal ones or the relational ones? All of them. No. Thank you. Yes, you are right. All of them, all the five are very important. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the model. But we have to develop personal competences previously, before everything. Why is that? Because no. if you don't have... Ah, I'm sorry. Someone else. Sorry, I'm going... Oh, no, no, it's okay, Costas. It's okay. Please. Oh, Costas, please. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So I was thinking that in order to collaborate effectively with others, you need to first be able to collaborate with yourself. So you first uh, fulfill the personal competence and then you advance to the relational uh, competence. I totally agree with Costandinos. This is what I would like to say. If you don't have a self-awareness to recognize feelings or weaknesses or uh, advantages of yourself, how are you going to demonstrate empathy for the others? Yeah, and, and that's that, and that's that. You are the, the only personal whom you live 24 hours per day, seven days per week. So it's the main relation you have, it's with yourself and it's your highest sphere of influence. So you cannot influence other people if you cannot influence yourself. 
So you have, and uh, usually when I'm with my clients, um, know yourself, Socrates, yeah, thank you, George, that's it. Uh, so usually with, when I'm with my clients and the majority of the adults that I see, they have self-esteem completely destroyed, it's, it's insane. Uh, people, people enter the 40s and I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happens, but they destroy their self-esteem in the way. And usually I always say then, do you treat other people as you treat yourself? Do you speak to yourself as you would speak with other people, with a friend, with a, some relative? And people say, no, obviously, obviously not, but they should. We should treat ourselves at least as good as we treat others. So our first relation is with ourselves. So in order to develop the, the relation competencies, we have first to develop the personal competencies. So the first one is self-awareness. And the tool to recognize or self-awareness self -awareness is the ability to recognize the emotion we are feeling at that moment. And something very important, not just emotion, but the trigger, the things that trigger the emotions that we don't want to react immediately through our reptilian brain. For instance, I have a trigger for, for, for bad emotions uh, related usually with anger. Uh, one of the, the, the worst triggers that I have is traffic. I hate traffic. If I don't prepare them myself, if I don't breathe a lot of times, if I go on a traffic queue for two hours, I just get insane. I, I, am, I, don't, I cannot even explain to you. So traffic is a trigger for me. So I usually prefer to sleep less 30 minutes, 30 minutes less, less and just go in order not to have traffic. For instance, being uh, sleepy, it's a trigger for me. For instance, being with hungry, it's a trigger for me. Uh, and the worst one for me, this seems stupid, but it's not, it's cold. Whenever I'm not comfortable with a, Context temperature or my body temperature, I'm very, very, I'm sorry for the my, my bad language. I'm a pain in the ass. It's impossible to be with me or around me because I am super picky. And why is that? Because I'm not comfortable. So self-awareness is not just uh, what I, am I feeling. That is very, a very part, a very important part of the process. But then you have the other one, and the other one is what triggers you. And for instance, in um, social uh, triggers for me, lies, lies as are the worst trigger for me. Uh, so you, you you have to understand what triggers you, and if you can write down all the points that you can recall. Okay, for. First tool to develop self-awareness. Each day, analyze what was the emotion more present in the day and you have the wheel of emotions. And then, if possible, recall if something triggers you. And why? what was it? In what time? Why? With whom? We have people that trigger us. Many times the same external behavior from someone, from some person triggers uh, trigger us and from other don't. So pay attention on that. Second, second pillar of the Daniel Goldman model is self-regulation. And self-regulation is our ability to control disruptive impulses and to think before acting and express ourselves appropriately. So self-regulation is gaining time. He's saying, okay, I have a reptilian brain that wants to react, but I also have a limbic system and I also have a neocortex. So let me gain here. We only need three, three seconds. If we gain three or four seconds between the cause and the behavior, we are, we can act with emotional intelligence. We have a, we have a lot of practices that, that we can do to self-regulate ourselves. For instance, all the, the practice uh, related with meditation, 
mindfulness, um, exercise. Exercise is very important because exercise gives us the power and the re the, the resilience to whenever we, we are in a in a bad state to put ourselves in a higher state, in a, a better state. So we have all of this to we all have all those tools to self-regulation. And then we have internal motivation. We have to understand what is um, what are the reasons that drives us? What what does what what, what motivates us? And usually we have six different factors that motivate us. People always think money, but money it's not from oh we are late, but money is not the most important factor. Uh, we have six basic human needs that can motivate us. Certainty, variety, significance, connection, personal growth, and contribution. Motivation is an internal concept. If I don't motivate myself, I cannot expect that others could motivate me. So one of these six, it's our higher trigger. For me, for instance, is diversity. I love to do different things. I love, I hate routines. I love to, to, to be with different people in different projects and to accept uh, challenges like this one. So we always have a trigger. So in order to, to, to work our personal um, competencies, we, ha we have to be, uh, to have self-awareness, self-regulation, and we have to be motivated. And then when we develop this, then we can start and interact with other people and um, and um, for that we need empathy and we need social skills. Empathy is the ability to understand other people's emotions and reactions. We usually say we put on their shoes. It's not just like that. We have to understand things for the for their perspective, but also respect them because usually we, we make the effort to understand, but then we say, oh, but don't bother. That is easy to, to solve. Oh, oh, I don't know. Don't bother. I don't know why are you so sad about that? That's not so important. So we try to be empathetic people, but then we don't we don't uh, um, give people the credit to feel the stuff they are feeling. So empathy is understand what the others are feeling from their perspective, but also respect that because usually or sometimes we don't respect others' feelings. We try to be empathetic, but uh, in the end, we don't respect others' feelings. And then uh, some social skills, uh, some social skills like rapport, communication, feedback, those are the skills that, um, orientate us and help us to communicate with others. So this is the model of Daniel Goleman. If you want, you can, you can have like two or three or different, you can think in two or, or different things to develop um, each pillar of the model. And if you develop each pillar, you will develop your emotional intelligence as all, as a concept, okay? Any questions about this? I have one question. Yes. In engineering, you know, sometimes you, like, like, one modern approach is the reverse engineering. So, I mean, I can understand the, the linear progression starting from the personal competence to the relation comp relational competence. But mm -hmm. if we think the reverse engineering, it, I mean, we cannot develop the relational, relational competence before the personal competence. For example, this probably will help us probably slower to realize our feelings by observing the others. So by interacting, by being a member of the groups, probably we are shy or we cannot express, but by pushing by the team, probably we are going to change and starting, you know, the reverse process. Is this possible or is it impossible? No, no, it is possible from my, my perspective. It's not the way it should be done because it's, yeah. like, okay. a, it's like a tree without roots. Okay, okay. very correct. Right. You, you, do you understand the metaphor? You can be a, yeah, 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 I can metaphor. understand. You know, it was very good. slow roots, or will you, because um, 
when you do that, there's a high, the higher risk is that you, you start behaving yourself um, with a, a, to meet the expectations of others and not from your essence. But, you know, sometimes now I disagree with, I will give you an example, for example. No, yeah. I'm wrong, obviously, probably I'm wrong. But no. I will give you an example. Be a member of a basketball team, for example, or be a member of a team. Uh, at the beginning, if you are moving from, you know, Ooh. from a team to another team, to a bigger team, probably in the short team, you think that, oh, I'm the best player or I'm the best player on the area. But um, when you move to a bigger team, then by comparing yourself with the others, this feeling stops. So by having social skills, be a member of the team, interacting with that's the others. Not of- social sk- that's not social skills, that's right. social interaction. Ah, okay. So, so when you change, you are in a different context. You didn't gain the skill yes. skills. Okay. You are just in a different context. Okay. So yes. obviously you are right. But when you go to a to a bigger team, what do you have to do? You have to be there, be quiet, observe. And if God gives us two ears, two two eyes, and okay. just a mouth, it's to listen and and observe twice twice and we speak so if you go to a bigger team what you 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 have to do is start with your self-awareness and say let me evaluate the context let me observe the other people and then you'll gain self-awareness about yourself and then you will develop the other pillars self-awareness is is always the the first one thank you very correct Thank you're welcome you. you're welcome you were you are not correct okay we can do as you said we can start by the relational competencies but usually from my experience and my perspective and the client clients i know etc usually what ha- tends to happen is that people behave uh, not according to their essence but according to others expectations it's a fragile yes. development yeah, that yeah. way Okay, can, can, I, can, I, can I ask something? Can I a little bit, you know, continue this? And yes. what about we are learning by our mistakes? So by, communi- <laughs> so by being social and expressing our opinion, we receive a feedback that help us to build our self-awareness because at the beginning we, we think that we are correct. Expressing ourselves, we are doing mistakes and then these mistakes can be expressed only if you interact with the others. I cannot see. No, 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 really. no, no. I do. I do a lot of mistakes interacting with myself. For instance, when you you understand or you re, you realize that you have behavior, behavioral patterns, because we all have behavioral patterns, and usually we tend to see them in the same context. For instance, we have patterns in our romantic relationship. We have patterns in our jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So usually I tend to say I'm a, I'm a, a very positive person and usually I'm, I'm like, oh no, I already, I already passed this pattern and now I'm, I'm putting myself again in the line and I realize that I didn't. So I, we can make mistakes and receive feedback by others' behavior and uh, we, are, uh, we have to work uh, self-awareness again. Self-awareness is always the base for everything. Obviously, it's not one, two, three, four, five. No, it's not like this. They, we have personal com- competencies and then relational competencies. We have to start or we should start with personal competencies. From my perspective, self and Goldman's perspective, self-awareness is the, the, the first one. But then you can, obviously, you mix all all, all of them in different contexts and with different people. Let me show. Yeah. Yes, Anna, say. And I, I was just going to, to ask, this is like a, if it was an iterative process. So it's always, because there are always, uh, it's not okay, I've developed my self-awareness now at this moment. So it's done. No. Period. Stop. <laughs> no, we keep on. Until within. the last day of your life. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. That's it. Job, job will never be done. Job will no. never be done until the last breath. In the last breath, probably you can relax and say, oh, okay, this, this emotional uh, intelligence, so no, I'm going to rest uh, about it. So I put here in this slide some of the skills that you can develop in um, each pillar, okay? Don't try to do it all at once. All at once. I, I one, and then you develop one, and then you develop another one, and then you develop another one. 
and defy yourself to develop different skills um, in order to achieve an, a higher level of emotional uh, intelligence. And it's something that uh, only time, experience and focus can give you. I'm going just to show you the model, uh, 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 2.0 model, and I'm just going to show you because it's just a little bit different and it, it is a model from Goldman also that is related with leadership. It was a, a model um, developed specific to leaders and it has four pillars and not five pillars. And if you, you can pair the two of them, um, what is the, the pillars that changed? Can you recall it? I, I do not understand the question. I'm sorry. The question it's is the if it's if you can see the differences between the the model, the Daniel Goleman uh, model 1.0 and 2.0. It it has to do with the personal. The first two. We have two major differences. First one is we don't have self-motivation because we are talking about exactly. leadership. We are talking about leadership. So usually we are motivated or we are not doing it. Okay. So this is the first. Um, and we, we as it, you could see here, we also have self-awareness, self regulation, and you have the, the things that they, they are inside each of them. And then on social, we don't uh, call it in, in the other model, we call it empathy and then social skills. And now because we have to manage, because if we are leaders, we have to manage other people, he divides two pillars. One is social awareness, then it has to do with uh, empathy and organizational awareness, how do I perceive the context? And then I have so social awareness here is empathy plus context. And then we have relationship management. Uh, it has to do with all the things that usually a leader has to manage uh, with uh, in their context with their people, like influence, conflict managing, inspirational, being inspirational, teamwork, um, work as a coach, work as a mentor, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so Danielle adapts. We, we have um a book, Danielle, Danielle Goldman has uh, three incredible books. One is Emotional Intelligence. The other one is Working with Emotional and Social Intelligence. And the other one is called Focus. All of the three are very, very good. It's, it's not the easiest person to read, but all the three books are very interesting. But this is just for you to just, just to... to for you to know, not to explore, because I don't know how many from the people here are leaders. So this was just to, to self knowledge. And then you'll have in the presentation some of advantages and disadvantages of working with emotional intelligence. So let's focus in the advantages. The advantages are obviously reducing stress in communication and making better decisions because we are we are choosing our behaviors, we are not being reactive. And obviously, if we do that, we can improve our career prospects. I usually say either in professional life or in personal life, because personal life, we also have a career in personal life. Um, now it's like, like um, they are just few marriages that uh, uh, marriages that last more than seven years, ten years. So we also have a career there. Um, help us a lot managing change and to have positive interaction with other people. And obviously, uh, uh, through communication, can be very very helpful and um, help us set a stronger connection with ourselves and with others. Usually, when we have um, higher emotional intelligence, we also develop a better connection with ourselves, not just with the others, but also with ourselves because of, of self-awareness, our self-regulation. So this is good um, for everyone. Some of the disadvantages, it's until, as Anna was saying, it's until the last day of our life. So it takes time. Um, usually we can be misunderstood. For instance, if we take the time to pause and choose our reaction, people can think um, we are not intelligent, 
we are not proactive. We 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 tend to to think slow. Obviously, they are mistake. They are mistaken, but it's what it is. Okay. Usually, in every 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 way we do something will have some um, criticism. It depends on the context, obviously, because because of the the person, and it's not predictable. Emotional intelligence, because our system our system of beliefs and the things we feel through the external causes, we don't have an universal way to in interpret emotional intelligence because emotional intelligence is different. We have, it's different from people to people. We have uh, a model that helps us to interpret, interpret and leave the concept but it's not universal, it's not global, okay? It's not to, as a language because uh, we use words and we know that we can communicate something with those words. With emotional intelligence, no. It depends on the people involved and in the context we are, we are in, okay? Any question? I think we, I, I have a, a three or four more slides with a, Final tips, but I will let them in the in the presentation, and you can see them. I just want to wanted to. Yeah, but don't worry, Anna. You can keep on a little bit. I, I can. To, okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm yeah. Give you. I'm going to yeah. give you practical tips. Just tips. A just a, just yeah. a, um, just a, as way as a, a wrap up. Uh, so we are time, still within the time. Don't don't worry, right? Okay, okay. I thought, okay. I thought yeah. we have, we have yeah. uh, an hour and a half, so I think yeah, we'll that one hour and a half until five, we are fine. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So <clears throat> first tip for me, this is this is uh, through my experience, and I'm I'm studying behavior behavior uh, human behavior for a lot of years now. Not with my twin brother, but with uh, with other humans. So some practical tips about emotional intelligence. First one is know yourself. If you know yourself, you will know others. You will understand others. And uh, pay attention. It's not something that you do with your mind. Now, write it down. Get a diary. Um, get a, a small book in order to do your gratitude exercises. Know yourself. That's the first step for everything. What went good? How do, for instance, how do I evaluate today in a scale from zero to 10 or one to 10? What was the best thing? What was the worst thing? Uh, what could I have done differently? And what am I grateful for? Five days, five days per, per five minutes per day, they will make a lot of difference in you as a person and in your emotional intelligence. Second, Define your values and beliefs. Guys, this is like our GPS. You can never guess how many people I ask them, uh, for instance, what are your values in life? And uh, like people with over 50 or 60 years and they are like, mm, I never thought of that. If you never thought about your core values in life, it's like Alice in the Wonderlands. Any destination is a good destination because you are you, you don't know where are you going to. So if you don't have your values your values well defined, anything is possible. Uh, and usually it will take you to a pathway that you, you don't want to go. I have my my core values very very clear. For instance, for for me in my case I can share mine. Mine's are passion. I have to have that sparkle in the eyes to do something. If I don't have it, I won't do it. So passion is my core value. Then I have love as universal love. Love people, love um, animals, love what I do, love, love, love. And then I have um, justice. And then I have transparency. And then I have uh, equity. Uh, and then I have reci reciprocity. Uh, so this is my core values. The, usually they don't change through time. I, I added two, um, but usually when they are really our core values from our soul, they don't change. So define them, make your list, make your own list of core values. That listen to yourself. What is that little voice 
saying to you, the voice inside your head? Is it the angel or the demon that is talking? Usually, usually, very often, people are very depressed, they are very stressed, they are very anxious, and I received a lot of patients with those diseases. And usually, the first thing I ask them is to start writing down the things they say to themselves. And for instance, if they make a mistake, the first thing they, they say to themselves is, oh, I'm so stupid. But if it was your uh, husband or your son or your colleague, and uh, if he or she have done a mistake, would you say then, oh, you are so stupid, would you? No. So if not, listen to yourself speaking, pay attention to the things, to the, the horrible things you say to yourself and gain compassion for yourself before anyone else. Don't expect, don't expect um, compassion and good emotions for, for, from others if you don't have it from yourself. And then visit the past to create your own future. What does this mean? Be aware and uh, um, pay attention to the patterns. The way you do one thing is the way you do anything, in anything in life. So pay attention to the way you, you were, you behave yourself in the past because usually, it will, refract, it will be reflected in the things you do in your future. All the patterns, the patterns that you have when you start a job, the patterns you have on traffic cues, the patterns that you have when you are hungry, the patterns that you have from your childhood, write them down. This is, this is core information to understand emotional intelligence. For instance, I have, um, I, I have a problem uh, with everyone that says to me, you have to do it this way. Every time someone gives me a, a, a straight direct order, I'm like, oof, I, I, I feel something in my stomach reacting and not in a good way, okay? So obviously I need to see was, where did this come from? And it came from my childhood and it came from the fact that I, 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 I was raised with a distant father, it was important. It was what it was, okay? But it was important for me to understand this, that any time I am in a situation with power involved, I don't follow rules that easily, okay? So the patterns are important. Fifth, learn emotions and handle them appropriately. First of all, is to understand that we all have emotions, that we have, all have five different emotions, and uh, one of the emotions that the society says to us that it's not um, very uh, beautiful to live is anger. We have to live anger, to live, to express it. But we have to have the, the, um, adapt, the adapted context to do it. So if you are anger, go to the gym, go into a punch bag and, or fight or uh, go to CrossFit and push tires, do whatever it takes but express it because if you don't express it, it will go deeper and deeper and deeper in you. And then you will get to the state called depression because if you see the word depression, it's only deeper depression. For what? For emotions, obviously. Okay, so pay a lot of attention to your emotions. Very important, go through the God's proportion. If you have two ears, two eyes, and a mouth, shut up and listen. It's the, it's, it's, if, you, if you cannot develop emotional intelligence, if you can do anything of the things um, I previous talk about, do this one. Do this one, and you see that you raise the, your interactions with others oof, a lot. Last one, step up your communication game. We are flexible people. We, we usually communicate in order to, to, to gain reason, not to be happy. So start living your life from the point of view that if you have to choose either have reason or being happy, start being happy because, uh, or start choosing happiness through all the logical in the world because we are not logical we are not logical beings. We are 
designed to survive and that we are emotional beings and in the end we are logical beings so start communicate from emotions from what i feel and not from what i think does this make sense yeah last but not least emotional intelligence allow us to respond instead of react we are not reptiles anymore we have that piece of brain, the reptilian brain that is very important, that command us in, it's the first one that it's triggered, command us in almost every situation, but we also have limbic system that helps us with emotional intelligence, and we have neocortex that helps us with solving problems, so we, we are not animals, let's behave like humans, and this is it. I don't know if... Thank you so much. You're welcome. Really nice uh, presentation and discussion. Uh, I, I, um, let's give the floor if there are any questions. However, yeah. a lot of questions that have been discussed by the way that you present mm -hmm. the staff. But let's see if there are any questions uh, on in the audience. Uh, I have uh, one question, but uh, it's not related to um, the old presentation topic. Uh, it's rather a question for the lecturer, uh, but if there are any questions about the uh, the presentation, um, they may go ahead first. George, Angel. Yeah. I, I think that uh, let's start with the ladies. I mean, even though that we are like to be inclusive and everyone is equal, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't want to offend it's anyone. Not related with the slides either. It's something more. Um, okay, Angelique, the floor is yours. The floor, the floor is to Angel. Okay, thank you so much. Um, can we speak about the fact that people with high IQ may use it for doing bad things to society? And isn't that a kind of, kind of narcissistic behavior? And how can we stop it? How can we prevent it from happening? Um, the, only, the only person you can change in life is you so never try to change anyone else because probably you will fail you can you can influence people but not change them so yes it's true that uh, many people that are very intelligent they can uh, they are doing bad stuff um, but people that have uh, lower iqs also are doing good stuff so as we we talked in the beginning um in this moment of life of the world, emotional intelligence is um, more important than um, rational intelligence. Obviously, when we see people uh, that have higher IQs doing bad stuff, they, it's very visible. It's not the, um, a big amount of people, but it's so visible because of the social media, because of the uh, communication means, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. We have not much than we that we can do um, aside of being paying attention and react with our emotional intelligence and rational intelligence. But there's nothing more we can do. We can influence. For me, we can influence them by leading by example. Whenever we lead by example, usually people follow. At least from my experience, people follow. So that's the thing I'm I'm trying to. For instance, with all the tools I have as a trainer, as a psychologist, as a, I know I know a lot about people. I could be super hyper manipulative person, and I'm not. I just choose not to be that, not to manipulate others. So I have the tools, and I I choose not to use them. Um, and I think I, I like to think that I lead by example. Thank you so much for your yeah, my dear. And thank you so much for your, your participation and your engagement. George, what about you? George. George, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, without any doubt, it was a very, very yes said. Uh, uh, without any doubt, it was a very, very fruitful uh, uh, conversation, I could say interactive conversation, even though. I have read Daniel's uh, books, both of them you have mentioned. No. Uh, I understood and realized in a, in, in a very, very uh, better meaning and way what Daniel uh, wanted to say in his books. What I would like to ask you is, is what? You said once 
that you feel a pain in your stomach or you feel something in your stomach when somebody tells you, I will, I will tell you how to do it, uh, Anna. Yeah? I, I know the way this is done, this, how you will do this. So you feel a little bit terrible about this. On the other hand, uh, we have mentioned that shut up and listen to the others. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you take balance between these two? How do you express to other people, you have to listen to them, as you said, and this is correct, of course. Yes, yes. But you listen to them. On the other hand, they, they tell you, I will tell you how you this is done, how okay. the, the way mm -hmm. you will do this. And how do you reject? How do you deny? How do you express uh, uh, yourself that, okay, I, I know uh, your opinion, but I will not follow it. How do you handle this? For me, from my perspective, and for the things uh, I advocate, for me, it depends on two things. Uh, first thing, uh, who is speaking? Because if uh, I'm going, I'm I'm going through to the beach, and someone insults me, I listen to the person, and it doesn't have any effect on me because I didn't knew it. So, first thing is depends on the person. Higher importance the person has in my life, higher time to speak she has. It depends on the person. And uh, usually that doesn't mean that they are soft with me, okay? Because usually closer people, if they are really friends and if they are really connected with me, it, usually they are the, the ones that gave me more uh, assertive feedback and they usually tell me a lot of stuff that I don't want to hear. The other <laughs> one for me, yeah, usually, usually it's like that. The other thing for me is if I perceive they are adding value to me in my life or in the, con in the context in general. For instance, imagine I'm in, in a training session. If someone is speaking and speaking and speaking and it's not adding any value, neither for me or their colleagues, I have to, to stop them. I have to listen, but I have to set um, um, limits to set um, to, 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 in order to gain the balance. So for me, it has to do with those things. It has to do with the importance that I, I get to people in my life and the value that their communication is adding because the world is very used to talk a lot, to talk too much. Um, uh, and I think uh, words are very, very over, um, how do we say it? And uh, sobrevalorizadas. Overvalued. Overrated. Overrated, overvalued. 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 Yeah, yeah, I wasn't recalling the expression. I think yeah. words are overrated. And I'm a trainer, imagine that. You imagine if I, if, I, if I weren't a trainer. I think people speak too much. I'm, I'm usually I do uh, every year um, a retreat, a uh, silent retreat, eight days. And you cannot imagine how difficult it is to re enter society because people just talk and talk and I'm like, oh, please, oh, please. And they are, they are just, it's talk by talk. They, are, they aren't adding any value. So for me, George, those two factors. Lucas. Uh, you thank you. Yeah. Um, so it it is a question for the lecturer now uh, on some on the perspective you have about the topic I will discuss now. So currently we face a lot that from teenagers and young adults they usually hate society. They don't like people. I face that quite a lot. I am sure that you also do uh, have the same experiences. And I wonder what made you and still making you love people in the current days and i will i will love you to explain why do you love for so me, much people yeah for me it's um for me the the, the solution to teenagers is disconnecting wi-fi okay if you disconnect wi-fi and disconnect all the gadgets for instance i was here in on vacation in easter time uh, and we, we had an um, um, Ukrainian family, we received uh, an Ukrainian family, and um, the girl and mother, they were like 12 hours per day in their mobiles, in their laptops, and we have, uh, the girl is, was, is 12, and uh, I have two cousins with 12 also, and one day, as a, I don't know, as a, as, as a play, a part of a play, I said, well, today we won't have Wi-Fi, 
and you cannot imagine the girl i finally see her face she smiled she she go to the mountain she climbed rocks she was she was even blushed and she was super happy so for me the 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 main thing is people are disconnected and they are disconnected from each other because they are too connected to their own life to their own gadget to to social media and etc for so for me that is the problem why do i love people I, i'm going to 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 give you my answer and usually when i when i when i share it people say oh you are all pink and unicorns i'm not i'm orange as you can see and cats not unicorns but usually people say that it's because I love people because I, I see people changing with me when I'm when I'm under, under my watch uh, through a training program or through a coaching sessions. I can see change happen and I, I always believe in people. I, I, I always can see what they they, they they don't see anymore the the shine they have, the ability they have, the potential they have. So I genuinely believe in people. I, I believe in them, in their potential and in their achievements. And this, this is something uh, I know that people are not very used to. That's why I love people. And, and when I do that, they react, but they react in a good way because they change, because they, they, they live happier. Then. So that's for me, that is like gas in my life. So it's a, a circle. It's the, for me, that is the real circle of life. It's the it's the motivation of... factor as yeah, well. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's diversity. It's your motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are a few, uh, a few questions on the chat, Anna, and Dimitris raised a hand. Yes. Now Dimitris. we are reaching, t now we are almost reaching time, but feel free to, to answer. Uh, let's see. We can continue with the Q&A because I believe the Q&A is the most important. And yeah. Unless Anna is very tired. Uh, yeah. Let's start uh, with Dimitri and then read, you know, the questions on the chat before they do it. Yeah. There are two that probably be interesting to close the session with. Dimitri, please. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Costas. I have two questions. The first one is uh, uh, if uh, this um, social, uh, excuse me, this uh, uh, emotional uh, intelligence has uh, some social dimension or social uh, uh, impact, does it have something to do with uh, the socialization of uh, the human, uh, the human beings? Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, oh, I think you are going to do the same questions uh, at once. Yes, it has. Um, uh, it has to do with, uh, with the evolution, our uh, evolution as, um, as a species, um, because we start to compare ourselves. We, we start to live together, and then we start to observe the others, and then we start to compare ourselves, and then we develop through that. If you read Sapien, Sapiens, the book uh, that uh, Anna Barat shared, it's it's... You have, you have everything explained there. But until Daniel's, Daniel Goleman studies that they were in the late 80s, uh, no, one, no one ever uh, gave it a name or um, um, transformed it in a concept. So Daniel Goleman um, made that job. So it has, it, that's why it has two pillars as a, so, a social dimension, dimension. One of is empathy and empathy it has to to do with the relation that we develop with others and the other one is social skills and social skills are the ones to observe the other to compare ourselves with the other to interact with the other to communication with the other so emotional intelligence definitely has um, um, a relation with the um, socialization okay before i will proceed the second question i should make a comment on that that uh, <laughs> Uh, can I? Obviously, yes. Uh, society is an entity that uh, extends not only in the, the today uh, planet, but also in history. Okay? So uh, if we want to uh, take seriously the um, dynamics of the human beings, we may have to uh, account 
all the history of the human beings and see what are the uh, common values and common practices and common um, uh, way of, uh, of, of common attitudes between the different civilizations on this planet. Uh, I am not an ethnologist and I know nothing about especially the Asians and the Africans and the, the Incas, but uh, I know uh, some things about the Greek history, mm -hmm. the European uh, people history, uh, because I, I grew up among all those people, so uh, we are now all together here, and I'm very happy to, to be uh, with you. But, but uh, there are a lot of many deep gaps between the uh, especially the Greek way of thinking and the nowadays um, uh, the, the nowadays present. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, the time is uh, very expensive, so uh, I do not uh, uh, spend your time to to, to speak a lot. Uh, I will mention only one word: the word empathy. Uh, it is uh, very wrong the uh, way that uh, uh, Mr. I don't remember the name of the guy who uh, used it, but empathy in Greek means uh, something very different than what this uh, guy uh, used to say in the frame of uh, his own science. Uh, okay, patient and empathy and sympathy and all those Greek words have to be uh, used correctly. If not, we break down the uh, social uh, uh, coherence mm -hmm. and it, is, it becomes very difficult to understand what the people in the past were saying and we lose our future. <laughs> Uh, I'm coming to, I'm coming, what? Sorry, I was just adding, adding something or uh, uh, this is also getting into what uh, was pointed out before related to culture. And so it's another uh, culture, yeah. history, history. Yeah. yeah. And they, they it's, uh, they, I'm just adding and so to the, to the, uh, and um it's uh, really very interesting to see over these lectures how all these uh, subjects are interconnected and how important mm -hmm. it is to think not about in the past but of their importance in daily life. And uh, so it's not by chance that uh, last week we, we heard about active listening and now Anetian emphasizes the, uh, also the importance of the, having two ears and two eyes to listen, observe, and only one mouth to speak. And that next week we will be listening about culture intelligence. And so in the end, it would be really very, very uh, enriching for, for all to, to have a kind of uh, summed up reflection of how all these can be combined to make ourselves better human beings uh, and uh, also have a positive influence, as was pointed out, on the context we can embrace because we cannot change the world on our own. own. And um, but uh, and it's also very, um, at least I'm finding very interesting to understand the difference, difference in meaning between empathy, the concept of empathy, while well, in English and in the psychological perspective, and the, the origin, the etymological origin of the word in Greek, because I don't know. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, I, I, have no, I, I had no idea that it could have different uh, meanings. Yes. Meanings. Yes. 
But uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from this perspective, uh, because um, uh, Dimitris was saying the way we think, the words and the way we think, but the way I presented emotional intelligence, it has not, the way we think, it's just uh, related with Reason. the neocortex, with neocortex. And we, are, we have to perceive emotional intelligence through all our three kinds of brains. And it's reptilian, limbic, and neocortex. So we have to observe, obviously, the way we think, but the way we behave, the way we feel, and also the way we react. Because only when we combine reactions with feelings, with the uh, ability to solve stuff, to solve problems, only there we can have uh, the, the larger experience of emotional intelligence. Thank you so much, Anna. Okay. Uh, may, may I pose the second uh, question? Yes. Uh, you have uh, already answered it. Uh, uh, the answer uh, was uh, within your last words, but I will pose the question and uh, make a comment on that. My question was, what is the relation of uh, emotion with logic and uh, uh, the mind? Yeah, it's, it's uh, the thing. So is, yeah. you, you gave the question and you gave the question. It's very, very, very important that your, your answer was given uh, on a biological, uh, neurophysiological uh, basis, uh, analyzing the structure of uh, of the of the human brain. Uh, let me make a comment on that. Uh, we used to to think that everything is located uh, uh, in uh, the neural uh, system and uh, the brain, uh, etc. But but. Uh, if one will think simply, uh, it is not necessary to be a, a, a neuro, uh, neurologist or um, uh, related uh, to all this uh, stuff, uh, scientist. Uh, if uh, uh, you make any thought, uh, uh, the thought, the, the thought um, awakes a lot of feelings. There are thoughts that may uh, make your heart uh, faster, mm -hmm. or you may raise your pressure, or may uh, uh, minimize your pressure, or make you uh, uh, <laughs> develop a lot of emotions. So uh, what I want to say with this uh, simple uh, uh, appointment, uh, the, uh, the the neural, uh, the the um, skeleton uh, muscular uh, systems, etc., are a unity. Uh, you said that uh, the brain has three three uh, areas, and in exactly. every area, something occurs. Uh, this is uh, uh, the outcome of some uh, electro. Um, something experiments uh, with which one found it that something occurs there. But all those waves that make uh, electromagnetic uh, 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 activities in, uh, within the human body uh, are not only on the place that they are detected. The, our organs, our uh, uh, artificial eyes that we read all those um, um, biochemical uh, reactions and uh, phenomena in the human body do not see the whole spectrum of the body. Yeah. And of course, they do not take into account the structure, the microstructure of the memory uh, that is uh, um, deposited within the neurons uh, and uh, the human body in general. Uh, nobody can read your memory to see if now you are thinking about what you will uh, do this evening or about the future of the war in Ukraine. Yeah, our so, mind is still our own. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is because, uh, uh, and I think I that we will preserve uh, this ability to, to, to stay to stay free. So what I want to to to, to say is that. Uh, uh, we have to analyze the, our behavior uh, in order to include the uh, experimental data we have from various sciences 
and uh, all of them based on one uh, common uh, base. The word coherence, logical, logical coherence, is I think the, the key word that explains why we are here uh, people from different uh, um, areas. Backgrounds. In this, yes, yes. Uh, in this uh, group, we, uh, somebody can find people from engineering, uh, uh, human sciences, uh, etc. It is very beautiful. It is very beautiful. We can start talking among us. That's why I want to, to say a very, very big thank you. You're and uh, I think that uh, this must be continued. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your questions and your feedback. It's very important. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, let's read, you know, very fast, you know, the questions on the chat. Very fast. Oh, I have five minutes more. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I no, okay. If, I, if you let me read, you know, I will be faster. Uh, if uh, a question from Valeria, is EQ and IQ positively or even inverse correlated? Very fast. No, no. You can you cannot uh, define a correlation. Uh, either it's a linear, exponential, or inverse. It has no correlation. You can have a, a huge IQ and uh, and uh, EQ. You can have one big. Uh, you don't have any correlation. It depends on person to person. You can assess the different types of intelligence in each person. Thank you. Another question from Stanislav. Do you think from your experience that EQ of society is improving, getting worse or generally similar to how it was always? I'm going to give you the data, uh, the official data, then my perspective. From the official data, emotional intelligence is improving because it's improving um, because we are gaining, gaining awareness, because studies, uh, studies are being done, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But from what I'm seeing here in Portugal and in general through the world with the war and everything, I think the ones that are improving are much better and the ones that are not are much worse. So it's a balance, but it's a very delicate balance. I think we have um, um, everything gets distributed in the nor normal curve. You see 10% in um, each of the of the, um, the, the sites and then the 80%. I think the 80% are getting better and we have that extra 10% that are also getting better emotional intelligence, but you have those 10% in the end of the tail that are a lot worse. And COVID also, not just the word, but COVID also showed us that. The ones that, that they had to improve, improved a lot, but the, uh, the other one became worse. Excellent. And that's it. These, are, these were the questions. I hope awesome. that I was not unfair to anyone. I would like to thank, you know, Anna and Dana very much for the contribution. You had very thank nice you. words. I have seen, you know, you love uh, people, but I have received a message from someone that says, I love Anna now. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> vice versa. It's, it's Tanessa, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> thank you us. so much, Anna, for-, for girls are incredible. I think it's yeah. both of us, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for, for, uh, for this very inspiring and enlightening uh, conversation. And, um, and now the material will be available. So when you can just send it out to me so I can share on Moodle with all the, the attendees and we'll keep in touch. And once again, thank you. Thank you very much for your commitment. Thank you. And, and, uh, and let's update our meeting next week yeah. eh, with another intelligence uh, presentation, cultural intelligence. Yes. So nothing is interrelated, but you know they have a common factor, as we say in mathematics, uh, the intelligence. <laughs> and the next speaker is with, with us, Tatia, Professor Tatiana Velzer from University of Maribor in Slovenia. So let's update I our meeting. Just say something uh, to, to end. It's thank you all the ones who turn on the cameras, because it's incredible to see your faces. It, it makes a lot of difference. So thank you all for the ones that turn on the cameras. Thank you. So update, you know, we are going to update our meeting next week, the same time we are going to make the poster, the dissemination among us within the Athena, beyond the Athena, and uh, let's support each other. All right, Kalinita. Bye. Green. Thank you so Green. much, Green. Anna. Bye.
when possible, just send it. Bye. Thanks.